Good evening. I am Richard S. McGee, and you are watching The Learning Tree. The Learning Tree is a show of discussions on diversity and inter interrelationships and inclusion. And I have with me a marvelous group of people here to my right who are going to talk about an incident in the town of Wellesley, which happened a number of years ago. Probably very few people knew about it until it came to light about uh, a few years ago. And we'll talk about how we got, got, got that information and, and what we're doing with it. But I want to start out by introducing you to my, my, my guest here. To my immediate right is Jeannie Goddard. Mm -hmm. Next to Jeannie is Gerald Murphy. And next to him is Marjorie Dor Doran. Damon. 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 All right, I knew I'd get it wrong. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> Let's start with you, Marjorie. Tell us a little bit about you and your history. Well, I've lived in Wellesley for 45 years. We moved here before our cho children were born and uh, expected we'd probably stay four or five years. But we loved our neighborhood so much that we're 45 years later, we're still here. Same neighborhood? Same neighborhood. <laughs> okay. And when my Good children neighborhood. <laughs> when my children were young, uh, from the age of about um, second, third grade, through their high school years, I worked as a freelancer for the, the Wellesley Townsman, which was probably the most fun I've ever had in a job in my life. I <laughs> loved it. <coughs> and uh, I got to know the town very well. Mm -hmm. and uh, the people in it, and um, I found it a fascinating experience to work on, in a small town where you really do get to know each other, mm -hmm. and uh, it was not always calm, but it's actually a very well-run town, mm -hmm. but there are certain always incidents, and after I'd been here for a while, I remembered uh, living in Cambridge in 1968, and the, a tremendous um, problem that had happened at Wellesley High School around, uh, and it was get, got to be known as the Wellesley Incident. And Jerry and uh, Jeannie can tell you more in detail about it, but right. as I we'll started we'll get to that. Right. as I started to write the article. You were living in Cambridge at that time? At that time, okay. yes. Uh, but you hadn't I, migrated. <laughs> no, <laughs> and it was a big change, believe me. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, we were um, very aware of what had happened in Wellesley. There was an awful lot of local press. To, um, it even got on the front page of the Times of London at one point. Mm -hmm. um, oh, really? I didn't realize yeah. that either. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. So uh, the incident was a very... Um, Let us not talk about the incident yet. Let's okay. talk about you. All okay, right. well, uh, so as soon as... Uh, I finished my 10 years at, at the Townsman. I went to Harvard School of Education and got a master's in education. It was wonderful, two wonderful years. Um, and then I have freelanced since. Uh, right now, my husband and I are very active in Harvard Institute for Learning and Retirement, All which right. is, has been a wonderful experience for us. Mm -hmm. We both teach and what did your husband take do? courses there. He was an elementary school principal. Okay. So we are. Uh, How many children do you have? Two. Two. Yeah, one lives in California. And they're doing great things in the world too. Mm -hmm. And the other one lives in Connecticut. Yes. Okay. We've been very lucky, and we found it a, a very good place to raise children. Um, we have a biracial family, mm -hmm. and um, you have a what? A biracial family. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it worked out quite well. Although, right. as I was talking with Jeannie and. Um, and Jerry, uh, mm -hmm. apparently it didn't for everybody, for all the kids mm -hmm. at the time our daughter was, was going mm -hmm. through the schools. But uh, they were one, our, our children got a wonderful education from K to 12, and we're very grateful for that. And um, <laughs> every time we think about moving, we, we find ourselves uh, still here. Just as an aside, <laughs> just as an aside, how? How did you find Wellesley as a, as a biracial family when you moved to Wellesley? Well, we were not biracial when we moved here. We did not have children when we moved. Oh, uh, okay. We adopted our daughter from Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we'd been here four years, five years. And uh, it was a very good experience overall. I can name one or two incidents, but largely 
uh, she was a very good student and she mm. was a very good athlete. So she was always uh, well known and teachers loved her and, and she was, she did very well in Wellesley, mm -hmm. but uh, she good. didn't choose to stay here <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> now, my friend Jerry Murphy. Well, Richard, thank you. Would you like to be called Jerry or Gerald? Uh, Jerry, please. Jerry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Th thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I came to Wellesley in September of 1959 when I, and I Where'd taught. Where did you come from? Uh, well, I, I grew up in Cambridge, but I was coming from teaching at Brockton High School. Oh, everybody's escaping Cambridge. Huh? I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a different Cambridge then. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had taught at Brockton High School for two years, and I came here to the middle school for three years. Mm -hmm. and then in September of 62, uh, I came to the high school and stayed until... Uh, June of 1998. Oh, so I was there 36 time. years. Yes. And um, I moved. We moved to Wellesley 50 years ago in 1967. Okay. Raised our two uh -huh. sons here. Both boys uh, went to Wellesley High School. My uh, older son Stephen is uh, a lawyer, mm -hmm. and he's active in town. He's uh, on the Natural Resources Board. He was uh, a town meeting member for a Fall long, long time. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was chair of the Democratic Town Committee. So he's very active yeah. in the town. My other son lives in St. Louis. Yeah, for a while, and you were the chairman of the Democratic Yes, Democratic I was Party. for seven years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, how many? Seven. Okay. Seven. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I actually had <laughs> forgotten about that. I don't know how I forgot, it, but I did. And uh, in my own case, after I retired, I... Uh, ran for the school committee, was elected to a school committee, served one term, and then I was town meeting member for, I don't know, three or four terms, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And um, started, started, tried <coughs> to stay involved in town affairs at mm -hmm. the moment, so. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it, good. that's good my part. story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jenny Goddard. Jenny is married to a man by the name of Brooks Goddard. I am. Yes. And I, Whom I and met I, at I, Wellesley I, High School. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the room next to mine. Is that right? Even <laughs> though I, uh, I got there first. Okay, let's talk <laughs> yes, about she you, did. She did. I, I did. can attest to that. Uh, well, uh, I grew up in Needham. Okay. Went to Needham uh, High School. The other side of the world. <laughs> yes, and uh, always had fun uh, telling my students that uh, I, I had to root for Wellesley High, because I'd been at Wellesley High so much longer than I had been <laughs> at Needham High, except okay. when our son was uh, okay. on, the, on the team. But I did my student teaching at Wellesley High School when I was a senior in college okay. in 1965. What school? And I went to Simmons okay. undergrad. Okay. And then uh, there was no job, so I had to find a job for one year. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Crockett called me back. And <laughs> so the incident that we're going to discuss tonight was my first year of mm -hmm. teaching at Wellesley High, and nice. I was 23 years old and thought the well, world was welcome supposed to, Wellesley to be a really has a different meaning, good yeah. and kind place. So okay. it was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, you're ready to take it on. Yeah. But <laughs> I I was in the English department with the sainted Wilbury Crockett, mm -hmm. and one of my very favorite students was Marjorie's daughter Julie, who was just oh, okay. and. <laughs> I loved Nick as well, mm -hmm. her, her other child, and Jerry and I actually had both of, right. both of them yeah. mm -hmm. in our yeah. humanities class. And I taught with Jerry yeah. that was for a many, famous, many, famous wonderful, class. Mm -hmm. many wonderful years. We yeah. taught humanities together. And I was in the English department, and I retired from full-time teaching in 2002, but then I stayed three extra years to teach the Shakespeare class. Okay. So all in all, I was here uh, 38 years. 38. And, uh, yeah. and, your, and your son followed. That's how long I've been in Wellesley. Is it? Oh. Right. <laughs> and then our son Peter, who, uh, bless his heart, mm -hmm. felt that the best possible job in the world had to be being an English teacher <laughs> because mm -hmm. both his parents were. Mm -hmm. right. And so Peter has been, oh gosh, 20 years at Newton North mm -hmm. teaching <laughs> English okay. as well. And he is married to wonderful. Natasha Goddard, mm -hmm. uh, who is head of the English department at the middle school. Oh, good. And good. Uh, we have two biracial mm -hmm. grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then Jerry and I both uh, did work at BU following mm -hmm. yeah. uh, student teachers, student following teacher. uh, okay. our teaching yeah. career. Student teaching. Very good. Yeah. And so here we are. Here you are. Good <laughs> people. Good people. Okay. 
the incident. Let's 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 back up a little bit. Do you remember when Metco first came to Wellesley? Oh, yes, yes, vividly. What year was that? 1964 was it? Uh, no, 19 the fall of 1966. Okay. okay. And what what was the actual year of the incident? 68. 68. So the same year that Metco showed up. Right. Well, it was the next <laughs> the kids who arrived in the fall of 1966 were juniors. Okay. That first group, that very okay. courageous group. Okay. Yeah. And then their senior year okay. was right before they graduated, or actually before it, slash after they graduated was the incident. It was in June. It was right after Bobby Kennedy, um, right before Bobby Kennedy, Kennedy was, assassinated. was assassinated. Correct me if I'm wrong, the first Metco group was high school exclusively, is that right? Yes, for quite a while. Quite a yeah, while, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just high school kids. Just high okay. school. Now, before I, before I get to you, Marjorie, I want them to start the story, mm -hmm. uh, beginning with definitely. what, what, what uh, triggered this whole incident. What was the what was the fuse that caused all this? Well, I, I can sort of tell you how it happened, then Jerry can uh, talk about the history department because they were very. No, I, I want crucial. you to discuss it. You don't have to oh, wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. uh, what happened that was that enabled this event to occur yeah. is that we had had all kinds of terrible snow weather. days, terrible weather, and flooding, floods, and all kinds of things, and we had missed a huge. But by Never that flooding, by the way, in case you could, the basement of the, the, the cafeteria. Uh, cafeteria was flooded. And the sewage back by in the old, in the old with yeah. raw sewage. Raw right. sewage, and yeah. so they clean it out, yeah. and so then of course we lost a week again. there, and oh. so yeah. then the snowstorms and whatever. And so we had to go to school on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and they also wanted us to go to right. school on Memorial Day, Day right. and uh, we knew Memorial Day would not be well a well attended. attended. Day, so we decided to do something special. You went to school on Memorial. Yeah, yeah. Yes, on and, that Monday, and, and this is when it and happened. And on Saturday. And yeah. Jerry can tell you the history department. Well, the history department had this idea of uh, kind of a civil rights day, or let's uh, get to discussing r race relations. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went to work on it and came up with. Uh, uh, guest speakers, and we came up a with movie, a movie, panels. and uh, we invited, uh, uh, Channel 5 actually invited itself in, that's become significant mm -hmm. in a few minutes. And uh, then the Eng we asked the English department, I can't remember you know, yeah, that, that detail. The English department's contribution was to uh, engage the Theatre Company of Boston to come. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the <coughs> context for that is very important. They had come out uh, earlier in the year to the drama club and they had performed mm -hmm. these wonderful vignettes. They, they did this great scene from Native Son where Bigger and Gus were talking ab about wishing they were pilots and a really wonderful evocative mm -hmm. scene from the novel. They did Langston Hughes poetry. It was a whole bunch of truly fantastic uh, choices, small bits. And so you know, we said, oh, how perfect will that be? Mm -hmm. So we called them up, and they came out. And my, I mentioned in, in the Townsman article, and when Marjorie mm -hmm. was writing her wonderful four-part series, I will always believe that the Theatre Company of Boston decided that they wanted to just stick Sock the knife in Wellesley. Yeah, right, yeah. And so they okay. included a brief scene, it wasn't that long, mm -hmm. from Leroy Jones, who, was, who became Amiri Baraka, right. uh, his play, The Slave. And I remember thinking, you know, I was 23, I had tickets to the Charles Playhouse, and I had just seen The Dutchman, a play wow. by um, Leroy Jones, and I thought, wow. What a school I go to! Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> they're so cutting edge. <laughs> you know, they're they're doing this uh, really controversial stuff. This is just because it was the '60s. You know, we yeah. were in the midst of it all, right, right. and I thought, how amazing is this? So the thing to remember before I go turn it over to Jerry is that there was a program uh, for the Theater Company of Boston and. Two English teachers, Ray, uh, Kay Cottle and Tom Fitzsimmons, were on, their names were on the program to introduce 
the theater company of Boston because okay. there were going to be two performances. Right. Yeah. Right. Half the school was in the gym, the big gym. Mm -hmm. The other half was in the auditorium. Okay. And in the auditorium, there was a film and a panel discussion. In the gym uh, was the theater company right. of, of Boston. Mm -hmm. And also, the, the, um, uh, some kids were bussed out along with our METCO students, a whole bunch of kids who didn't have school that day. Right. Uh, came out for the day, and it was so. The the audience had more people of color, you know, than, than be, ever before in the school. And sure, ever before. Yep. So so that I think uh, added a kind of you know free soul to the right. uh, it did. to the day. A little energy. A little energy. Indeed, for sure. It did. And it every, did. everyone was extremely yeah. excited. Yes. And uh, should I keep going? Why not? Okay, so <laughs> my my first. Well, we want Jerry to have a little, <laughs> yeah, little part of the well, No, it well, just happened. It's cool, and I used to wash the windows and <laughs> clean and uh, make myself useful. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, I try so to do these little things and <laughs> help make a difference. But I happened to be in the gym for that first performance. Okay. And so you know, we're sitting there, and in we get to the. Uh, the slave, mm -hmm. you know, the excerpt from the slave. And uh, the story was uh, just briefly about, uh, you know, had been, there had been an interracial marriage, a black husband, white wife, mm -hmm. divorced, the uh, wife had remarried a white man, and the uh, uh, husband was still in love with her and was trying to persuade her to yep. come back to him. And so, the, this was the play. The play, yes, and yes. it was just this little scene mm -hmm. where he broke in, and he'd, you know, I think been drinking. I, I can't right, remember yeah. exactly. He had been, uh, yeah, he was. He and had been drinking he, in the play, so, yeah. the the F word, and this is 1968. See, people don't realize everybody uses the F word now. Even I, <laughs> oh, myself, <laughs> I I'm learned from my I'm students. I'm shocked. Not I'm shocked. often. Not I often. I try to stay away from it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do try to stay away from it every now and then. And um, as an adjective, generally. And uh, <laughs> it can be any part of speech. Ever the English you're, you're teacher. You're admitting this on TV. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, I know. In I'm politics, shocked. that's called spin. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was such a shock, yeah, you know, to hear the word. Yeah. And basically, the word was the focus. Yeah. It became the focus of the Unfortunately. Incident. Anyway, so then there was a moment where... Uh, the husband tried to embrace the wife, the former husband tried to embrace the wife, and that became known later as... The rape scene. The rape scene. Which, of course, had never it occurred. It was not uh, at uh, all. Yeah. And I noticed as I was sitting there, and everyone was riveted, that an elderly uh, teacher uh, was trying to get down the bleachers, and she fell. And I thought, oh, too bad. Mm. You know, I'm thinking that's sad. I, I, I wonder if she's feeling all right. It never occurred to me that she was trying to escape yeah. this foul language. So the thing is over. I, uh, we have a lunch break. Okay. I go to the cafeteria, faculty cafeteria, and there is a knockdown, drag out fight oh. involving my own who? Friend Jerry. Yeah. And some yeah. of the male Jerry, teachers. Jerry, was it just a No, oh, it no, was. No. Well, yeah. tell well, them. Tell well, them. Well, I, I want to I back up a little bit. Uh, while I this saw was, it with my own eyes. Uh, uh, well, you're going to have to remind <laughs> me. But anyway, let me back up a little bit. I was in the auditorium, yeah. and we had shown a movie and had a panel discussion. I was leading the panel discussion. And at that time, Channel 5 was there with John Henning. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the equipment was such that it took them a while to set it up. They didn't have the instant cameras they have now and the mobile cameras. They had to uh, set them in. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, it, it, was, it was a good meeting and all that. And we opened the door. For, it was in the auditorium. We opened the door. We hear all this yelling and screaming and chaos. Like, what the hell is going on here? What's going on? People are screaming. <laughs> and l let me just stop it there and, and digress slightly. What John Henning did that night on TV irritated me and still does to this day, even though he's deceased. Mm -hmm. He opened his broadcast by saying, 
that it was so bad at Wellesley High School today, we could not bring our cameras into the room to film it. <laughs> they couldn't bring the cameras in because they couldn't get them in there quickly enough. They were screwed down or nailed down, whatever. So that uh, and that, that what that did was uh, right in, in itself set a tone to the whole, oh my God, it must be awful. And then uh, there was yelling and screaming, as Jeannie mentioned, and uh, I'm trying to figure out what the heck went on, and I finally got it in bits and pieces. And there was pushing and shoving and accusations, and the, I c can still see the anger on one particular teacher's face, but the anger on the faces of those teachers who were opposed to this was frightening. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are almost as if in another world, the, in the anger, and there was mm -hmm. the pushing and shoving. I don't remember it. I'm not saying it yeah. didn't happen. I just don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Jeannie can pick up on that. Yeah. And the whole thing went into total chaos. Fingers were pointed, uh, all uh, kinds of things. A, do you consider this a racial situation? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Pure oh, yeah. and simple. And, and, and they, as I said earlier, or in, in another location, uh, they focused on the word. The F word? Yes. Okay. They didn't focus on the real issue, the real problem. Of racism. Of racism. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. That was the issue, the word. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, we could never break through that. No. And the result of all of this was, um, um, as you might imagine, a major split in the faculty that, in my view, never really healed. We, began, we came, know, I think it we came to a healed. point where we accommodated mm. ourselves. Mm. But, uh, well, I, I respectfully yeah, disagree. Yeah. I don't think it healed, but it, it, it was always there it, with it, certain people. It was very difficult. It was very difficult. And yeah. one of the uh, things that happened at the end of, of the performance that I witnessed, so that first performance, is at the end, the police chief yeah. Came Who was the chief at that time? Uh, oh, boy. McVeigh. Was McVeigh. 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 Yeah. Chief McVeigh. His son right. was a student there and apparently had called his father. Yeah. And Marjorie will probably know yeah. more of those details because she interviewed all these people. Okay. And uh, all I remember is that he came in with a whole bunch of other policemen with warrants for the arrests of the two English teachers whose names were on the program. <laughs> and the, uh, just the, two of the head yes, just of the, the two. theater company of Boston, those three uh, people. Uh, okay. And the thing, I mean, Kay Cottle was a, a very forceful, dynamic, fan, just fabulous teacher, teacher uh, presence. woman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, was up for, you know, just she was a, you know, very a real force for change and activism. Mm -hmm. But Tom Fitzsimmons, the most gentle sweetheart yeah. of a guy, soft spoken, never, yeah. never would have said a harsh word, never a profane this? word. He was the uh, director of the theater program. Oh, okay. And so he was the English and taught English. Mm -hmm. So he was arrested. This absolutely perfect man, you know, who never wanted anything controversial ever mm. to happen. Mm. And he did leave Wellesley. It broke him. It yeah. was just, that's the thing that just frosts me about later. the yeah. Theater Company of yeah. Boston, is that they didn't anticipate or seem to care about the havoc that they were wreaking out here, even though you know, intentionally. We yeah. No. no, I think it was intentional. You think it was intentional? I'm inclined yeah, to I agree do. with that too. I do. I, I do think, think they, they wanted yeah, they right. wanted Wellesley to suffer. I mean, and maybe Wellesley deserved to suffer mm -hmm. in terms of uh, of uh, prejudice and bigotry that did exist mm -hmm. in the town for sure right. as as results of, from what happened. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot there were a lot of casualties, mm -hmm. you know, along the way. And, and, and uh, just, I just want to add one piece. Wellesley at that time was all white and the epitome of success and all that sort of thing. I mean, there were no, no black there, there, there were, no, there were. There were, there was. Several families, but maybe two. Two families, yeah, yeah there were two families. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, it was considered a haven for uh, whiteness and 
uh, establishment, what have you. And that, that's the context that we have to keep. It was not as racially diverse as it is, as it is today. We can argue whether that's enough or not, but that's another issue. But it, w it certainly was far from that. And it was uh, considered to be uh, uh, exclusively very wealthy, successful people, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So mm -hmm. I think that context is important to keep in mind at the moment. Yeah, and I think Marjorie can speak to the yeah. impact that it had, that, because we've it described the event, mm -hmm. but then the impact it had yeah. in the community. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was shocked. I read the, reread this after 30 years that mm -hmm. I had written, and I was appalled. And I forgot I had written it. I thought <laughs> I was writing, reading something that some sociologist had, you know, come yeah. into Wellesley to write about. Mm -hmm. I was shocked all over again, horrified mm -hmm. that anything like this could happen in a town like this. Um, and. I, you know, I'm thinking that maybe it should be published because it's mm. a part of the history of Wellesley and right. it ought to be handed out in the diversity committee or the whatever. Mm -hmm. So people know that this did happen once in the perfect white suburban town. Mm. Uh. Mm. And I think also um, we need to introduce the uh, follow-up after the event yes. occurred and yes. there was all of this oh mercy you know all of this unrest yeah. amongst mm -hmm. the faculty yeah that was just the beginning and then it went oh. to other community other community groups the uh, selectmen had a meeting and then the school committee had a meeting an open meeting thinking that they could that dispel some of the right. tension and invited everybody to come and it happened to be the Monday, that, which would have been the, so it was a week later, and it was the day, because Bobby Kennedy was killed, he died on the 5th, maybe? Uh, I can't June remember 5th? the exact date, but I'll make this uh, a personal observation, as, as I recall it. Robert Kennedy was assassinated during all of this, yeah. mm -hmm. and Wellesley barely noticed. Yeah, and, and there was, uh, do you remember that, um, lovely psychiatrist guy. I had his son in class that year. He got up and he said, people, this is at the open school committee meeting, right. do you realize we're in the midst of this national tragedy and we're worried about language, you know, and, and uh, you know, profanity and, you know, he said, uh, and of course know. the riots were going on elsewhere mm -hmm. and Robert Kennedy was, uh, Janie's yeah, right, yeah. And, and he was Hooted down, I think. I, yeah, oh, he absolutely. He certainly wasn't down. listened to. Absolutely. Oh, my God. <coughs> and Robert so Kennedy's just been assassinated. Yeah. The town literally imploded. Yes. Yeah. It, That's the it right word. Destroyed yeah. itself yeah. in no, a couple of weeks. It, it was did. just. It did. Uh, and well and I've yeah. always, in thinking back, felt that 1968 was that kind of that year in which so much happened, so yeah. much tragedy, so much change, mm -hmm. and suddenly kids in Wellesley whose parents wanted them to go to Princeton, they wanted to go to a commune in Vermont, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so marijuana had sort of snuck into the school and we'd had a marijuana incident. <laughs> so they're, you know, they, I think they, and we had Medco and they're thinking, oh my God, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on? Wellesley is no longer Wellesley. So I think there was a lot uh, underground yeah. happening, and it, which co helped cause, you know, churches. Well, there was a lot. Churches went bananas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they, yeah, they felt it as well. And up until '66, uh, '67, thereabouts, what was happening in the larger society really wasn't felt in Wellesley mm. to any great extent. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, this. It, Reality came crashing into Wellesley, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is what resulted: the chaos, mm -hmm. the splitting of the town, the implosion. Mm -hmm. That's such a perfect mm -hmm. word for this. Yeah. And it was just a total chaos. Mm -hmm. And this um, meeting really captured everything. Oh, did it! And ever. I went by myself to the meeting, and um, there were. It was in the old auditorium of the old high school, mm -hmm. and. School committee was on the stage, and they had 
two um, microphones on either side, and people would come up and address the school committee meeting. But can I interrupt yeah, again? Yeah, go ahead. The place was packed. Oh, pa Every packed. Every seat was packed. taken. It was, they were down People the were aisles. standing in the aisles, in the back, spilling out to the steps. Yeah. Mm. Almost 2,000 people, I yes. was told. Oh, really? Easily. Oh, yeah. I was told. And, and probably that and auditorium three sat TV like cameras from the three stations in Boston. Three yeah. what? Three TV stations in Boston. <laughs> we're all there. We're all there. And the, and the big Four, thing. Four, seven, and five. The big <laughs> thing is that, uh, you know, people kept coming up and, and the, I just, I do want to put in a, a couple of positives before we go on. Um, there were some amazingly courageous people in this town, mm. both white and black, yes. who came forward and were <clears throat> just magnificent. The you know, school committee had, uh, those people were, who had voted to have METCO, they right. were just splendid people. They were, in every, every one of them. And the students, by and large, mm. were fantastic. Yeah. And at one point, the president of the junior class got up with this huge petition that most everybody had signed, mm -hmm. uh, saying that, uh, in essence, that for them, they believed in academic freedom mm -hmm. and that the real, ra uh, the real profanity of sanity was racism, mm -hmm. not the F word. Mm -hmm. And people were booing <coughs> them, and I remember these people sitting in front of me, one, the woman said to her husband, Those, that kid should be in bed. And yeah. of course it's like 8.30, well, you know, and the kid is 17. howling, hissing, <laughs> chance of lock them up. Yeah. Where's yeah. the police? It was a cacophony of, of chaos. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. It but, was. It was but then what happened mm. is it started to build and get scarier right. and scarier. And Betty Powell, who was an uh, elementary school teacher in Boston, and she was uh, uh, one of the few black families in uh, Wellesley. Okay. And she got up and said, and there's some controversy, but I remember it one way, and yeah, I, her son remembers so it another way. Right, yeah. But I remember her getting up and saying, the woman in the blue raincoat or turquoise raincoat in the fourth row just told me to go back to Africa. <laughs> and so <laughs> half the audience said, yeah, you go back, go back. And said, no, no. And so it, it was crazy. Then <laughs> another woman got up and said, it is time for Wellesley to get its white suburban ostrich head up out of the ground. And then these men in the back started yelling, say the word, say the word. <laughs> and <laughs> Jerry's <Eddie>. student. <laughs> Eddie Bryant uh, was a student of mine. And uh, he stood up at the microphone amid all of this. And it was semi-quiet, if there is such a thing. Don't forget, you can't say the word no, on no, television. I know, I know, I can't. <laughs> and he said, as he cleared his throat, he said that I first heard the word, and he uttered the word, in the first grade in whatever elementary school. Well, <laughs> and he said my it God, it was times. old faithful erupting. <laughs> And they came running, in these venom, men. In venom, lock came, him up. No, but they came running down the they aisle. They came, yeah. Running down the aisle. <laughs> yeah. A policeman came from the lobby, got him in a hammer lock. I have all, unfortunately, somebody stole all my articles. They dragged him out. By the throat, d down the stairs, into a police car, to the Dedham Jail. And one of the administrators stood up at the microphone and beat his breast, saying, Lamb of God, <laughs> Lamb of God. Lamb of God. And I was like, what, what? what is going on? And they were dragging heard. Eddie out, and a few teachers and myself. This is Eddie so, Powell? Eddie uh, Bryant. 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 Okay. They were taking him to the police station, so, oh, I don't know, probably half a dozen or ten of us tried to head out the door to see if we can do what we could and do. Were we weren't even sure. Running out. Oh, there were lawyers and all no over the place. No cell phones. No cell phones. We didn't have oh, cell no, phones then. None of that. And one, one little. And the you know, and we were trying to talk with the students and so forth. Did did no good, mm -hmm. and they <laughs> followed Eddie in a grand march down to the uh, police. Put Ed in the car and so forth. They took him to and the Dedham. students took him yeah to the Dedham Dedham courthouse yeah. yeah. Mm. 
and uh, they tried to follow him, but they went down to the police station yeah. and protested and uh, all that sort of thing. And it was just amazing. Uh, and I don't know what to say. It was just and my unbelievable. And my personal little event occurred after this, and I was it, it, finally. You know, there were a number of other things that happened. But finally, the uh, Ruth Walters, who was the she was the chairman of the chairman school of committee. the school committee, and became Matt King's former superintendent's okay. mother-in-law. Mother right, right. <laughs> and she called. She thought, "This is it. We've got to pack it up." Yeah, people were yeah. rioting in the oh, it was in the auditorium. So I came out of my little row, and I saw two teachers: uh, a music teacher and a math teacher. Now, the music teacher I knew, but the math teacher, this old guy, I had never met him because mm. it was my first year. And uh, the uh, math, uh, music teacher said to the math teacher, this is great. You know, this makes our side look so good. Look what's happened. Yeah. And so I said, how can you how be can happy? This kid has been dragged off. I mean, look at people are rioting. I mean, uh, this is a nightmare. And the math teacher whirled around, and he was a big guy, and he pointed it right at me, and he said, do you know who taught him those words? <laughs> and I, who had never said anything but oh fudge or oh sugar <laughs> ever, ever, I mean, I'm telling you, True. president of the library club, you know, I never, he never. He was a waif. Yeah. <laughs> he said, do you know who taught him those words? I said, no. And he said, you taught him those words, people like you. Mm. So I, of course, burst Perfect. into tears. Yeah. I went to my car. I put my head on the steering wheel, sobbing. And I went home to my, my mother <laughs> and slept and beat him. <laughs> I was so shocked. <coughs> I thought, what is going to happen to the world? You yeah. know, that, that there's such hatred uh, out there and such animosity and, and wish for ill, you know, not trying to break through and you know, be reflective and all of that. And Marjorie, why 20 years later did you take an interest in this? So, uh, this well, so. I would occasionally write something, a uh, <coughs> column about yeah. this happened 20 years ago or this happened 10 years ago or whatever, and this was, uh, I, th was what I planned to do. This mm -hmm. happened 20 years ago. It would be maybe 900 to 1,000 words, and that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. But when I started talking to people, I was so overwhelmed mm. by the kinds of things that had happened and the kinds of things that they talked about and that had lingered in mm. their lives for 20 years that mm. I said to my editor, who, bless her, said, go ahead and do what you can with this. It ended up being a very, very long uh, series of articles. Mm -hmm. Uh, but and brilliant, brilliant oh, articles. Was, brilliant. I was it's I was nice. shocked reading it again, mm. thirty years after I had written it. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think the the sociological impact. Mm. There were people who moved from Wellesley, yes. uh, because of it. Um, yeah. uh, Tom Fitzsimmons left Wellesley mm -hmm. as a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I, lives were were changed yeah. and altered, and some of them very negatively. Yes. by the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Did you make an observation of what had, what changed in that 20-year period of time? Not so much. What yeah. I was writing about was the event, yeah. the incident, and how it happened. Yeah. I didn't put it in context. Yeah. How about you guys? Well, what happened in 20 years after, uh, or during that 20-year hiatus period? Well, I, I think one of the great things for Wellesley mm -hmm. is the growth of the METCO program. Mm -hmm. And by then, the METCO program was K-12. Yeah, it expanded. And there yeah. were yeah. lots sure. more students. Yeah. There were uh, lots more people of color moving into the town. There were more Asians, more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, a number of Muslim families were here. Um, also, I mean, more Jewish families. I mm -hmm. mean, because in the 60s, the temple was only built in the 60s. Yeah, and mo most uh, Jewish families coming into the town, I knew this from a friend of mine, were encouraged to buy homes in, the, the, in the birds school. by the uh, fifth school in the yeah. temple yeah. area.
There's a lot and of so anti-Semitism. Yeah, we'll there there are, any other incidents involving? Yeah, uh, there uh, was. Uh, Janie will help me with mm -hmm. the year. There was the incident with uh, the uh, eruption uh, with uh, Asians. I mean, uh, African Americans, just white students, a riot outside. Yeah, I, I can tell that. Yeah. Janie, you know, Janie it, remembers better the, than This uh, was the fall of 1979. <coughs> so. Uh, Later, that years was later. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, really a terrible, terrible day. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I won't go into all the details, but what had happened is um, a group of white students felt that there was a black student who was stealing from the mm -hmm. gym lockers. And they saw this particular person come into school in happened to be one of my students' cars, another MECO student. Mm -hmm. So they went out, even though these other kids had nothing to do with anything. So the white students went out and they trashed the car. Whoa. They, trashed they trashed the it. windshield, it, it, scratched Every impact of that word. Yeah. yeah. And so the word got around. And the school was huge then. Yeah, it was there 15, were about 15, 15, 1,600 kids. Of, with three grades. And, oh, at least three grades. Three grades. Then, yeah. Yeah. And um, and it was crowded. We didn't have these extra yeah. uh, additions and so forth. So what people would do if they didn't have class is they would go to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So the cafeteria was loaded with kids. And so the word got to the uh, black students whose car had been trashed. They went out to their car, saw it, opened the trunk. There was a bat. They had a basketball. Uh, I mean, a baseball bat and a tire iron, and mm. they went in looking for mm. the kids who mm. had been seen doing right. this. These are black and kids, they, weren't looking for yeah. the white yes. And they yes. hit yes. one of the uh, yes. white kids mm. in the head, mm. and, you know, head wounds mm. bleed. I mean, he was, he turned out, to, it was okay, mm -hmm. but he bled enormously. So within, I swear to you, with because I was teaching Shakespeare, and I was teaching mm. Romeo and Juliet, and we were talking about Mercutio, and uh, you know, having, you know, uh, anger in his head, wanting a fight in Act 3. And just as this would happen, all of these white kids started going right through the school mm. uh, like looking for black yeah. students yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, banging on classroom doors. Mm. And so the announcement, the principal said, would all, you know, uh, MECO students and uh, you know, they didn't, African American, I can't remember the term they used at that time, uh, go immediately to the auditorium. So <laughs> the <laughs> teachers tried to get all these kids in there safely so that buses could come and, could, uh, and take them out. on that for just a second. Mm -hmm. That, what, the, the principal at the time wanted to keep the kids safe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Metro kids safe, but a lot of them misunderstood that he was trying to segregate them uh, in a ne negative yeah. way, mm -hmm. and that caused some some misunderstandings yeah. too. But mm -hmm. uh, principal thought, no, this would be a good move, and yeah. I happen to agree yeah. with him. I thought it was a good move, but mm -hmm. it was misinterpreted. And see, then all see, these, they're separating yeah. us. And so, no, no, that wasn't. Then there were probably. I mean, when you think we had fifteen hundred kids, there were probably three hundred kids in involved. Two hundred, mm -hmm. three hundred, but, but that's uh, still a yeah. lot. Yeah. No. And they were outside in the circle. Uh, and the principals announced to the teachers to go in, try to get the kids inside, and it was a nightmare. Gene McGuire came, all yeah. the cameras again yeah. came. Gene well, McGuire, well, the well, executive director police. of Medco. Of Medco. Right. And she was called names. I mean, it was yeah. humiliating. And you know? the state police were called in? It was, it was crazy. <laughs> and it was a horrible And in day. many ways, it was worse than the slave, in yeah. a sense, because the slave... The animus seemed to come from adults mm. rather than students. Yeah. So I, f I found yeah. this particular race riot. It was mm. very frightening. But a lot of, I, I, I had tons of students sobbing inside, you know, yeah. looking out the window. Did any of that spill over into the town? No. It, it Not that I remember. It was at the, at the, at the No, and I now. think the principal, we had a very good principal at that time mm. and knew all the kids. and. Mm. They had an ebony and ivory group that came out of this, and, and so there was a lot of important sort of healing done within the school system, but I do not remember. I, I, don't, I don't recall it either. 
Mm. I just don't recall. But to go back to your original question of the 20 years between no. 68 and 88, mm. I would say the relationship in the school was rocky, uh, ups and downs. But the one positive thing, I like to think it's positive, mm. at least after, uh, as a result of these various incidents over the years, people began to talk. Mm. Mm. Now, it wasn't always as productive or as long as it should be, mm -hmm. but people were beginning to talk. Students, faculty, mm -hmm. and faculty talking with students. So, and then something else would come along that would upset that again. But at least there was uh, sporadic uh, rationality taking over at times. Mm -hmm. So that, mm -hmm. that I, I, th I think that's a positive, but mm -hmm. it was certainly mm -hmm. not what it should have been. Yeah. And then uh, I just want to follow up. Uh, just to backtrack a bit, uh, on, on, as a result of the slave incident, the, the court business. Do you want to talk about that? Oh, uh, well, the crazy thing about the, you know, there had to be a, a, a hearing before a judge okay. uh, yeah. of the three people who had been served these warrants. Mm. And Kay Cottle happened to be about eight and a half months pregnant at the time. <laughs> okay. So she had to schlep over to the Dedham Court. and sweet Tom Fitzsimmons, and a number of the teachers no. uh, testified against, no. against no. them. Against no. uh, Tom and Kay. And yeah. one teacher in particular, I won't identify him in any way that mm -hmm. people would know, whom I happen to know mm -hmm. was a, an abuser of students. I mean, he was yeah. a very bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I still remember his coming in, his comment, he said, Frankly, I was disgusted. Mm. He said in, in court, and Jerry and I just. Oh, just, I turned livid. I, I was just because of the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy of the was enough to yeah. send you around the mm. bend. But yeah. fortunately, summer came mm. and saved us, you know, mm. because I think if this had happened in the fall, I can't imagine. Oh, what I can't the imagine what happened at the beginning of the school year, oh. my Lord. That's a great question. And it, 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 w it was very painful. <coughs> and, uh, but I think there are so many people in Wellesley still who do not flinch from looking at the truth. And you certainly are one. Mm -hmm. With uh, uh, Michelle Chalmers is such a sweet, wonderful person doing okay. World of Wellesley now. And how important that organization has been for the town. Mm -hmm. People like Marjorie, who mm -hmm. revealed mm -hmm. these uh, truths to the town, and uh, school committee people, selectmen. I mean, there have been some tremendous people in town, uh, and the students. Yeah, I and always the, the school committee. Just to jump yeah. a back a few years, the school committee. Uh, in what is it, 1965, that uh, voted unanimously yeah. to have the METCO program right, come. Unanimous. And I know for a fact that mm -hmm. their families were threatened. Mm -hmm. uh, rocks through the windows. Rocks through yeah. the window. <laughs> yeah. Phone oh. calls. Uh, yeah. You're kidding. All I'm not kidding. Jerry's daughter in law yeah. is, her, her, was her, a little girl, her, and she told me the other day about yeah. the rocks through the yeah. window. Yeah. I her, her father was on the school committee. So, so Rhodes Law. Yeah, Rhodes, yeah. It was. Uh, um, so I think that's awful. that's always been, because I love Wellesley, mm. I, I I love old Wellesley, and it, it's always been this amazing blend of layers. Yeah, I guess layers might be the best layers way of, of the kinds of people who are here. So mm -hmm. people who just make your heart sing, and then some other people who make you make you crazy. You know, and it's just. It's it's mm. just an interesting mm. community. So, what do you think of the school system now? Where where, where do you grade it? Is it uh, is it in a lot of improvement, particularly in race relations? And are they doing a lot of things to keep the. Oh, I think they are. Uh, I think they you are. don't think there's a potential for anything, even a modified version of this happening in today's. World? Well, I mean, there was that incident last summer. You know, with last the, summer, yeah, with the um, Instagram. I mean, but that was more a oh, a okay. few kids, right? Yeah. 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 You yeah. might know more about that, Marjorie. Yeah. Yeah. Th those yeah. kind of isolated, almost yeah. individual. But the systemic, 
implosion. I love the implosion. It's a great word to describe. Yeah. That we went through in the 60s yeah. and then later in the uh, 80s. And I, I think don't know the, if that would the happen The school again. department has learned from that. There are more programs in place now mm -hmm. to, first of all, in, encourage diversity and cooperation and, and so forth. And to train teachers. And too. to train te mm -hmm. teachers are, are more, uh, in general, much more aware no. uh, than they were then and because mm. and, uh, they've lived through it. And I think that the, the school has, as I said, built in uh, programs and checks and uh, other things that to, mm. to speak to these things before they occur. But so I, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm hopeful about but that. But there is still mm. so much work to do. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, staggering work to do. I mean, uh, the job is never done. No, it's no. never. It'll never end. And, uh, <laughs> and in today's society, it's even more difficult. It is. It I, is I more think difficult. It's, so. it's it's trickier. It's trickier than it was. I mean, people I think are less out there. But at least. Uh, it's uh, it's overt. Yeah. See that I, I agree. People are, people it are is overt, you know and, and that's stand on the I hope so. That's I progress of a strange kind, yeah. but it is at least it's out there. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is what I we're don't dealing know if it with. It always is. No. But well, maybe not always. Mm. But yeah, what were you going to say, Marjorie? Well, I, I would just like to add one thing. I think that the police department is very different than it oh, was, yes. big and time. that yeah. that Amen. makes a huge Amen. difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are more sensitive, and mm -hmm. they have worked hard to integrate the department mm -hmm. and uh, to have uh, a presence in town that is positive and not mm -hmm. punitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Well, this is quite a story. <laughs> it is indeed quite, quite a story. A story. Yeah. You know, stirred yeah. up just yeah. thinking well, about it. Lisa wrote what the last, to me last when I read garden. this again. I, I, guess I just don't believe this. And there were things that had fallen out of my psychic computer sure. in sure. 30 years. But the, mm. the, the openness of the people who had been taken part in it still astonishes me that they were so willing mm -hmm. to spend time, busy people, and talk to me. I went into Boston to talk to financial people who'd been on school committees and whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, there was one thing that Ruth Walter, the chairman of the school committee on uh, that famous school committee breakout, mm -hmm. she did not have a gavel. Yeah. She didn't have what? She did not have yeah, a gavel. She needed one. <laughs> Something as small as that mm. can make a huge difference yes. in the way a crowd is handled yeah, and yeah. controlled. That's a great yeah, that detail. Yeah. I've forgotten that detail I from your sure. article. I remember yeah. it now that yeah. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. She was, you know, trying yeah, and, and could it. not do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And she was she was one of the she great was a special souls. person, yeah. yeah. She was. Ruth. She was. One of the brave people. Well, so very yeah. good, very good stuff. No, I'm, I'm there. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm pleased that you, you folks, came to sit with me and have this discussion. Mm -hmm. Delighted to and, be here. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll put it out there and we'll see what happens. And I really don't swear a lot. I don't want, I don't want that out there. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but Jaleesa, Jaleesa Jones wrote the most she recent article. Yeah, most she did a nice article. job, I thought. Yeah, yeah. and I, I want to know, I want to tell her I got a longer story than she got. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did a fine job <laughs> trying to bring it into the present day and yeah. what's happening yeah. at the high school now. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a good thing. Yeah, they do some good stuff over there. Yeah. I, I, I've done some work with both the uh, super's office and, and school committee. I've had a, I've had the, uh, the the superintendent and his people on at least a couple of shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one show, one of the shows we talked about discipline, and, and there was a there was a a. a Study done on discipline in the Wellesley school system, and unfortunately showed a disparity. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, uh, I'm sure. Was that recent? Yeah. Hmm? Was that yeah. recent? Well, I, I think I had him on the show last year. Yeah. Uh, so, but the, uh, the study, how how recent is the study? The study was years? the study was done last year. Oh, last, last year. year. Right. Oh, and uh, it, an attorney sent it to me. Mm. He had he had researched it and really oh. sent it to me and. Uh, yeah. When I had my meeting with the super and his people, uh, we discussed it. I had it, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, 
that's See, that's, for, that's the work that has to be done right. still. Yeah, the, per the person that tried desperately to explain the difference was, uh, was the uh, director of Wellesley Metco program here. Kalish, Kalish, Warham. She did a good job of explaining why there was this mm -hmm. disparity. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I thought that was very good. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'll invite you someday to have a scotch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, I want to thank my viewing audience. This has been a good discussion. I thank you for being with me. I'm Richard S. McGee, and you've been watching The Learning Tree. Good evening.